All right, folks, I'm Rich Folley. This is PBS Book View Now. We are raging through the day here Friday at the Miami Book Fair 2016. It's Young Readers Day for PBS Book View Now, and we are blessed now to have Amy Ignatow Hello. with us. So nice to have you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you have a new book called The Mighty Odds. A lot of people know you from the popularity papers of a series of how many books? 80,000. No. <laughs> It's seven books. Seven books. In the, they have in, many pages in them. Yes. They're very popular books. <laughs> and now you're new in The Mighty Odds. Mm -hmm. Mighty Odds is uh, a new series. You're going to be writing more of these. That's true. Yeah. The second one is already mostly done. It'll come out in spring. It's called Against the Odds. So uh, there's like a bit of a cliffhanger at the end of this a book. A bit of a cliffhanger. Just a bit. There's a total cliffhanger at the end of this Can book. Can I be honest? I don't remember what happens in that book. Because <laughs> really? I already wrote You've the next You've moved on already? So I can't remember what happens in which one. All right. I'll remind you. Thank you. Uh, well, first of all, you introduce. That. What, one of the things I love about this new book of yours is mm -hmm. that you introduce us to these wonderfully unique characters. It's sort of a breakfast club for... Uh, middle school, and these kids all come together in a way that they never would have had this crazy bus accident not happened that bestows upon these four kids. And then the fifth is sort of like Charlie of Charlie's Angels or something, who sort of is there overseeing everything. Um, the these, powerless these, Professor X. Yes, exactly. These characters, um, uh, Martina, Nick, Farshad, and Cookie, and all of them are given unusual characters. Tell us a little bit about the idea of mashing up these people and where you found these, these unique and unusual superhero powers. So they get into a bus accident and uh, when they all come out of it, you know, they're pretty much uninjured, but then they realize that they don't have, they don't really have superpowers. They have like really sort of mediocre powers. They have kind of lame powers uh, that are They, they often don't make sense of what they could actually do at the beginning. You have right. to sort of follow along to see what they might be able to do. Because suddenly they realize that one of them realizes that she can change her appearance, and that's Martina, but only her eye color. And then Farshad has super strength, which sounds awesome, but it's only in his thumbs. You know, so good luck with that, you know, new iPhone screen <laughs> with your <laughs> super thumbs. That took a while to figure out. Actually. Yeah, and then, um, yeah, because, I mean, who, who's noticing that? Yeah. Like, unless you're like, like a professional thumb wrestler that's and then right. you'd notice it immediately. And I don't think that's a job, actually. Or maybe it is. The internet is a wonderful place. You can look it up. But then there's Nick, and he can teleport, but only four inches and only to the left. And he also doesn't often, uh, he can't control it. And finally, there's Cookie, and she can read people's minds, but only if they are thinking very specifically about directions. So to me, I don't want to give too much away here, but it's a metaphor. It's a metaphor for growing up. You suddenly realize that you have you know, these powers, but you can't really control them at first. Yeah. And they're not as strong as you wish that they would be. But they're also totally unique to you and mm -hmm. they're, they're unusual and, you know, maybe to other people, but that you have inside right. of you. Somewhere. And someone might be jealous of you for having that, but they don't know what you're going through. Right. So that's, uh, you know, kind of where they're at. And I set it in a small town uh, in the middle of Amish country, uh, just because I wanted them to be kind of isolated and to be uh, very much like in their own, that in their own little world and in their own little space where they sort of have to deal with the society that they're in as opposed to being able to escape in any sort of way. Mm -hmm. So. And they're heading to the big city, Philadelphia, which is where you're, I am from. you're living and yeah. are from as well. So Pennsylvania has near and dear to your heart. It is. I was actually just at the Lidditz Book Festival last week. Not to like, <laughs> it's another book festival. It's like a very small little book festival put on by Aaron's Books there. And have, from going to that book festival is what inspired me to place it in a town that's like that in Lancaster County. Um, so I'm like, oh, close enough that I can do a little research, but, you know, also something new. Yeah. Well, there's some mystery involved, too, because the teacher... Uh, that was or the substitute teacher, Mr. Friend, who was on the bus, has some weirdness going on too mm -hmm. after he's all done and is a, plays a big, he sets things on fire randomly all over the place. And, and there's, we don't know exactly why or what's happening and that's sort of the mystery that unfolds. But you talked a little bit about this sort of metaphor of not knowing what you're good at and the, you know, understanding the difficulties you go through. There's some overt things you're dealing with in here too, like clicks, mm -hmm. like bullying. Uh, Farshad is uh, Iranian and, and is, is called Terror Boy and people mm -hmm. are, you know, misunderstand him completely and he just completely backs out of any exchange with anyone because of that. Mm -hmm. And you see some of the other kids, they're all going through something. Right. Um, and, and well, isn't that true? Everyone's going through something. It's true. You know, and so when you have these four different perspectives, 
Um, three are sort of traditional, like, text. And then the fourth is just drawn by the character of Martina. So there's lots of cartoons in the books that are drawn by her, but actually by me, wink. <laughs> um, and so uh, as you go through, you start to see each character through the eyes of the other character. So for instance, Farshad, who is called Terror Boy, uh, the reason he's called Terror Boy is because Cookie made up that terrible na nickname for him and it's stuck. And she has no real idea of how deeply it has affected him. You know, she doesn't seem to care in the beginning of the book, and by the end, she's starting to realize this is a person, and I have done bad things to him. And a lot of these, you know, relationships go back and forth. No one notices even who Nick is. Um, and then all of a sudden, he has this, you know, rich backstory that no one knows about, and everyone, everyone's got a story. Yeah, and I think that this, I mean, obviously empathy is what, is such an important topic in all of children's literature right now. You're seeing more and more talked about it and the importance of books and sort of opening doors and we've talked a lot about it today. Mm -hmm. Here I go again. But in your book oh, especially... You're talking about <laughs> empathy again. <darn. laughs> but in your book, it really is about opening yourself up to actually get to know someone's story. Mm -hmm. And that is a real challenge for almost any kid, obviously. But for you, um, writing about it and, and getting people over that hump, it took a bus accident for people to really sort of lower those barriers and to open themselves up. I would definitely not suggest anyone going to that extreme to reach like an empathetic not. point in their point, you know, in their lives. Like right. they shouldn't have to get into a bus accident. So that's really a lesson for the ages right there. Yeah. You know, so don't you, wait until that happens. You know, there's another character in here, Jay, who's sort of the wisecracking side. I mean, that, it's just a fun character, friend of Nick. Mm -hmm. Um, reminds me of Anthony Michael Hall and 16 Candles. I don't know where your inspiration comes from everything because there's a lot of, <laughs> like, I, I already said Breakfast Club, now I'm saying 16 Candles. Maybe a little bit too much John Hughes going on. But, it's, but he's sort of the one that doesn't have any superpowers as far as I know. I don't know what's going to happen in the next book. But um, <laughs> here he is sort of just catching on to whatever, what's going on with everyone else. He's the one sort of connecting all the dots. What is the role of the J in that for you? And, and, and tell me more about like, that sort of wisecracker. Well, I think that everyone needs a friend like J. Everyone needs a friend who will embarrass them, who will be a catalyst for adventures, um, who has no shame. And sometimes J probably should have some shame, but a lot of times he just says whatever he does and he feels like doing, and he, he has a lovely life and doesn't care what anyone thinks about him. And I had a friend like that in high school, and it's so funny because a, a, a close friend read this book and was like, I know who that character <laughs> is. And I'm like, no, it's not him. It's just inspired by. Um, because we need those people in our lives to just, you know, create sparks. And sometimes it gets dangerous, and that creates fires, but sometimes it warms you. Yeah. I just got real deep. But um, It worked for me, though. Thanks. <laughs> I should write this down. Uh, but no, but for Jay, I wanted to have that, that character. He's not a sidekick. He's a partner. And when your partner suddenly has, as Nick does, the ability to teleport, you know, but only four inches and only to the left and you can't control it, Jay wants to be there for his friend. But he also wants to make his friend the best four-inch teleporter he can possibly be. And we need those people in our lives. I try to be that person in other people's lives. The best four-inch teleporter you could possibly be. That's, that's like, I, I'm being inspired right now. I'm going to put it on a bumper sticker. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. We're going to sell a jillion copies. Uh, well, you will if you keep selling these books. But let's talk, too, about the sort of hybrid element of this book. There's mm -hmm. drawings and there's text, and there's drawings and there's text, and you mix them up, and you create this... It sort of propels you through the story, but it also adds sort of um, visuals to the story, like where you're not necessarily imagining everything in your head. T that's like for a graphic novelist, that's perfectly sensible. For a kid who grew up without graphic novels in my life other than comics and that mm -hmm. sort of thing, it, it sort of puts a visual on the characters, their faces, what they look like, who they are. Um, the, how did you grow up reading and do, do you think that that's a cool addition and the, the hybrid element of sort of mixing them like that? Well, I think that up until a certain point, like most books that were, you know, for that age group for kids are actually meant do have illustrations. Like if you look at an old copy of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, yeah, there Charlotte's are illustrations. And, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So this is kind of a continuation of it, but it's also beca different because the illustrations are supposed to be done 
from Martina's point of view. Right. And so the illustrations are a little twisted. She always draws herself with antenna because she feels like an alien. She feels very different. That's before the accident. So, you know, she's not always even the most reliable narrator. You're not quite sure where she's getting these ideas from. And I think that as the series unfolds, you'll learn more about her. But um, I wanted to have that element in it uh, so that kids could make the words themselves for yeah. a lot of things. And I think that, that graphic novels do that. Yeah. And art in general, you know, does what words cannot, visual art. So to have that mixed in. Also, I have this art degree, so I have to use it or else, you know... Uh, uh, my parents will be very disappointed in me. But you also have the sense of humor and you have obviously a memory of some sort of your, of growing up and you're able to sort of blend those things together to create a story that I think is resonating with kids. I saw them outside your event today. That was too cool. And it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that, that obviously is something that hasn't left you totally. You have a memory of that life still. I am incredibly fortunate that I have very good friends who I was friends with at that age. Um, and I think a lot of people have like one or two friends like that. I think I have like seven. You know, we're all, we're all still pretty close and tight even though we, ha we don't live in the same cities. Um, and we remained close even before the era of Facebooking. So um, I can, they can call me on it too. They can remind me of things. Yeah. And that's, uh, I'm very lucky for that. Those are good friends to have. They're amazing. Fantastic. Well, your new book, Amy Ignatow, the, the new book is The Mighty Odds, a new series. Another one coming, really exciting to see. And uh, I wish you all the luck in the world. I'm so happy for you. This is a great new book. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's great to meet you too.